to the Death Ray Cat channel. I've got Ray Waters from the Zipheads here. We're about to play a gig. Where are we? Way? Way? Ray? Way? Way? We are, we are in Blackpool at uh, the Waterloo Music Bar, which is one of the best venues in the UK. Uh, we're currently upstairs. Uh, this isn't the venue. The venue is a lot more like what you'd expect. This is just the upstairs. Uh, one of the little rooms they have for bands to play when they stay over. Yeah, this is the backstage, so I thought we'd do a little rig rundown, talk about your lovely white falcon there, mm -hmm. which is pretty new, right? It's pretty new. Uh, maybe a couple of months I've had it now. Excellent. So, yeah. So uh, is it a 2024, do you reckon? I don't know. Let's have a look. Could you know how to tell? Yeah, so oh, if you want to know the year of your Gretsch guitar, you go and have a look at 23. The yeah, first two numbers, first right? First two numbers, 23. That's uh, how you tell. There you go. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. So what, you got some Filtertrons on there? Yeah. TV Jones Classics. Yeah, yep. TV Jones Classics. Um, so, like, I think like a lot of uh, Gretsch players, I um, started playing Electromatics because that was all I could afford. Still pretty, you know, mm. and they're not cheap guitars. We know this. Um, I had uh, I had an electromatic for years and I ended up getting another one that I bought um, second hand, third hand off uh, some friends of mine and that had had some TV Jones put on it um, and yeah, I'll never I'll never not use TV Jones now. So yeah. so much of like the sound I was missing uh, before that comes comes from those pickups kind of thing. So what's the difference between your stock filtertrons and your TV classics, for example? Like they're just they're just more. You know, I'm not much of a gearhead, and I'm not very uh, articulate when it comes to describing sound. They're just clearer. Um, right. My other guitar that I have is 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 an Electromatic G five one two two, I think. So it's quite different to the Electromatics I had previously, and still have. It's thinner. It's like a not as deep a body, mm -hmm. and it's a double cutaway kind of thing. So it kind of looks like a is it the it, like an Epiphone or a, oh yeah you know uh, what was Lucille BB King's guitar three three five yeah it's all Gibson three three five it kind of kind of looks like that yeah um, but it came with like mm. standard Gretsch pickups mm. and like while that's good for if you're in like a Birds tribute or something mm. like that jangle indie jangle kind of thing you know if you're not playing that and you're playing something with a bit more bite I was just losing particularly like the low end down on these strings yeah okay I was yeah, losing, yeah. losing a lot of power and then yeah. overplaying overcompensating by turning up the amp mm. and then I go up high and it would be like piercing but this okay. is kind of it's just a lot more even and you get a lot more definition out of the the lower notes so that mm. red uh, electromatic that's like my number two yeah uh, guitar uh, I had the pickups change on that to uh, TV Jones as well 
right. and it's like I'd say you know if any of your viewers uh, can't afford like you know a Falcon or the Country Gentleman like because mm. they're expensive guitars they're yeah, expensive indeed. guitars let's, let's be real yeah. um, you get some TV Jones mm. and then put them on a normal Gretsch Electromatic you've got like most of what yeah. you get from a Falcon yeah. obviously the hardware's better the fretboard's better the, the scale's better and stuff but you know if you want a kind of a cheap alternative yeah. TV Jones are expensive I got some blemished ones mm -hmm. in their sale that they do every year we're in the UK here and still had to pay a hefty customs thing to get them yeah. over but you can get a pair for maybe 200 250 quid so you can get a yeah. close sound yeah but obviously Without. this this came with them as as yeah. standard mm. as I think all the top end like Gretsch's kind of kind of do. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like you got all the extra bling with a Falcon as well, haven't you? It's just Yes. Beautiful Yours thing. is more bling than mine. His I don't has know. these nice like wing things I on, the, on the front. Should have brought it up. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll do a little <laughs> do a reaction video just like that, to your man. own. <laughs> and then uh, look there. It looks like that. It's all fucked up though. I can swear on my own channel. Okay. Um, oh, right. I, I didn't realise that was on the fucking well, cards, man. I think yeah. fucking, Fuck I it. just oh, bloody right. well did, fucking didn't I? Hell. Um, so yeah, mine's quite a lot blemished. It's got um, like tan lines and, and scrapes from it, uh, but I got it second hand, so it's a little cheaper because of that. But um, yeah, I think I want everyone to check out Ray's band, the Zipheads, if you don't know them. Uh, they're just really fucking good. How would you describe your band? Because they're you kind of like you're a bit rockabilly you're a bit psychabilly but you you're quite punk as well uh you've got reggae influences um uh, all like motown so yeah what would you call it uh we just call ourselves a rock and roll band and i know that's that's really vague but uh yeah i mean there's like we have a double bass we have a double bass and yeah. that's so it's it's something billy you and a big hollow and Gretsch. a big and a big hollow buddy Gretsch. yeah um we love the stray cats and you know that was kind of when we were putting the band together like lineup wise it's that classic trio drums bass and you know Gretsch guitar double bass Gretsch guitar the living end another like you know huge uh influence on us yeah um but like really you know more influenced by like general rock and roll than like rockabilly yeah, yeah. although obviously it's a it's a blurred line and stuff mm. um but like i think a lot of uh, a lot of people who are into rockabilly now and rock and roll like we were punks when we were growing up I think everyone, everyone you know you're a teenager and you start listening to any guitar music like Slipknot or whatever mm. a lot of my friends were into and then you know you go from band to band and kind of you know listen to more stuff and I think people do tend to go backwards as they get older mm. that was certainly like the first band I ever really loved was Green Day that's what made me want to pick up a guitar cool um, and then, but like once I'd consumed all of the music that they had that was available to me, I'd be like, right, well, what do they listen to? Yeah. And so I'd read interviews with them where they would talk about bands like the Rosillos and Stiff Little Fingers, who are like two of my favorite bands. And I would seek that out. And also, you know, I had music loving parents. So when they mm. heard me playing, playing Green Day, my dad was like, these guys are just ripping off The Clash, man. Yeah, like, you right. need to listen to The Clash. Yeah, and they're ripping yeah. off this band and this band. Yeah. Like, you know, my dad cool. was pretty musically literate. So yeah. So we ended up going sort of backwards and listening to 70s punk. And then, you know, sort of just landed on, on sort of rock and roll and yeah. kind of got stuck there for, for, for a while. And it all becomes the same kind of slop anyway, doesn't it? Exactly. And Exactly. Yeah, I think uh, Green. I think the Living End got the kind of big through sending a tape to Green Day, and then they took them on tour. So uh, Green Day were coming to Australia, I believe, and uh, the Living End sent them a T-shirt and a tape, a cassette tape, because uh, this would have been the uh, mid '90s, I guess, uh, and did a tour with them there. And I know they've been like pretty tight ever since. But mm. you know, the Living End, incredible band. If your viewers haven't heard them, like I urge you to go and listen to them as soon as possible it's weird they're they're australian and they're like in australia like they're the biggest band like yeah. not even like a genre thing mm. like number one of the mainstream charts in australia right. every single every album because it's it's their boys and yeah, yeah. they get behind them yeah. but sort of outside of australia they're just not that well known which is a yeah. travesty and like chris cheney the reason i really bought this falcon was because chris cheney from the living end yeah. plays a falcon and he's probably my my favorite guitarist kind of thing. Yeah, he's awesome. So like, he's very good. Very your, good. Your songs remind me of 
the earlier living end stuff, like up to, is it roll on? Maybe the yep. state of emergency. Yeah. That's kind of that. That's like my favorite era, and like your stuff. Every now and again, I'm like, oh yeah, that that reminds me of that kind of songwriting, or there might be a little lick here and there. Yeah. But it's dead like energetic uh, guitar playing. You guys would love it. And you, you probably right already down. know him. You might be fans already. I wanted to ask you about, seeing as this is a rig rundown, about your pedals. I had a little look last night. Okay. You got quite a, an understated board. Yep. Do you want to tell us about what you've got, what you like? Yep. What uh, you need? So uh, when I started playing, I had one pedal and that was a tuning pedal. Uh, and then everything else was done, you know, uh, through just through the guitar and through dialing in tone in the amp. Um, excuse me. Although, like when we play as the Zipheads, we have, like you say, punkier songs and reggae songs and rockabilly songs. We don't like change the tone of, you know, the guitar to mm. suit that much. Um, you know, it'd be tempting to, you know, to do that. But really, we kind of like it's the same in the studio. We're like. This is a reggae song, and we'll but we'll play it in the same tone, you know, that we play all our other songs, and people will know it's a reggae song because it's written that way, and because we're been playing it that way. People aren't gonna go, oh, this guitar tone's all, all wrong for yeah. that. Like, do you know what I mean? So um, a case in point would be the "What's My Number," the Toots and the Maytals song. You well, do. that's a reggae song we do as a rock and roll song, right? Yeah, we're, but we have our own. Uh, Reggae songs. One one is one's called Manslaughter. Yeah. Um, it's got almost dubby as well. Yeah, yeah, it's it's proper. Yeah, it's it's kind of um, there's a there's a dub section in it. So I do use a delay pedal for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which I'm so, uh, I'm sure you saw. Um, yeah, a bit of delay uh, is really good for for dub, obviously, and mm. obviously I play with a fair bit of reverb anyway, playing rockabilly surf kind do of stuff. You, you know. Use it. On the amp? So I use the amp reverb, right? You know, for for that, just as a general kind of tone. And you're uh, using a Marshall amp at the minute. Is that yeah, right? yeah. I yeah. use a, a Marshall amp, um, just your standard. Uh, what was it? Dual Super Lead, right? Uh, Two thousand kind of thing, and just a, like a Marshall cab, uh, and it's great. You yeah. Know? Um, and when I first got this, um, you know, it was sent to my oh, strap box come loose. Good thing. Yeah. Good thing I checked that. If you get a toothpick, oh, yeah. jam it in there, you don't even need any glue, you can just unscrew it, put your toothpick in there, it will give those uh, the screw something to bite on. Try it with one toothpick, you can try another, but yeah, that, that does happen. That would have popped off tonight. Yeah, it I'm can happen. Way. That one's solid and anything. That's because um. you're kind of wanging it around your head all <laughs> night long and... Uh, yeah. Um, what, you, what were we talking about? We're talking pedals. about pedals. Yeah. So I keep interrupting. No, it's all right. Excited. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> delay, but that delay pedal, I use it for two songs, I think, three sometimes, depending on the set we're playing. But yeah, our reggae song, and then we have a song called Action Dino, which is kind of a spaghetti western surf kind of thing. We do have some surf songs, and then I'll then I'll put the delay on. So reggae or surf is where, where, where you want to use uh, delay kind of thing. Nice. And then I have a distortion pedal, um, and that's on most of the time. Um, that's a Boss something yeah, like that? Yeah, just Boss OD2 Overdrive. There you go. Uh, real standard uh, kind of pedal. Kind of similar to a Tube Screamer. I've never used a Tube Screamer, mm. so I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. I think Tube Screamers are more kind of mid- kind of heavy okay whereas I don't know I'm I don't know I thought you might but I don't <laughs> well yeah it's kind of it does a sound that you, you're after and yeah and I and I don't have like loads of the, the gain uploads on it so it's a leave it on yeah. all through the set and also like my uh, the tone that I just come through my amp it's, it's on the distorted channel but with mm. a very small amount of gain Right. But I don't play super clean like no. a, a lot of rockabilly people do because I'm just not that good uh, and I don't want people to hear, hear my <laughs> mistakes. Um, also, yeah, my drummer's loud and you know yeah. my bass player's loud, so it would be, be a losing battle. But we've yeah. got a couple of uh, uh, like the intros to some of our songs are like you know just kind of chordy singy stuff. Mm. I'll turn the distortion off for that. Mm -hmm. 
uh, so it's a bit cleaner and we've got like a, a scar number that we do in our set as well and, like I'll go for a cleaner tone when I'm doing the yeah you know, those chords and stuff so you uh, you guys having a generally like not heavier but yeah maybe heavier more distorted sound than your classic rockabilly bands or whatever that kind of enables you to go and play these punk gigs and like so, I don't know support punk bands and well, you can play anywhere, but I don't know, having that extra bit of volume, it gives you a little extra edge, I think, with maybe that kind of circle, yeah. maybe with festivals and stuff, I don't know. Yeah. Like certain it, kinds of festivals. It does, and conversely, we can kind of, like, if we get booked for, like, a, you know, a hot rod car mm. show, you go, okay, all right, they're probably going to like the, yeah. the rockabilly bit, uh, stuff a bit better. But even then, again, that would mainly be like the set we choose to play yeah. rather than like the guitar tone. Mm. Um, but yeah, um, we play a lot of punk gigs where we can. That's that's how we, you know, we, we, we're still a punk band as well. Mm. Um, you know, just with a lot of sort of uh, rockabilly influences. And, you know, there is there's a huge sort of crossover, mm. you know, it's, still, it's all, yeah. all subcultures and stuff like that. Um, you know stuff that isn't in the that had its time in the mainstream but isn't anymore and yeah. people left behind going well actually we still always this wasn't a fad for us you know yeah. we, we still really like that um and so yeah and you know when we started it's like we were sort of the only rockabilly band in town and nobody knew who we were so we uh, when you when you start a band you take any gig you can and we used to get put on these bills with like it would be like an indie but like a you know libertines like wannabe kind of indie yeah. band uh, us and then like a thrash metal band yeah. like, so you know like a ridiculous lineup kind of thing yeah um, get used to doing your own thing yeah but like I think if you put a rockabilly band on at a punk festival or a punk festival mm. uh, sorry a punk band on at a rockabilly festival no one's gonna walk out and discuss no, no. like do you know what I mean yeah. I know the, the psychobilly meeting in Spain which is the biggest psychobilly festival in the world they now they always have you know one non psychobilly headliner. Yeah, yeah. Just do. Uh... Yeah, sometimes it, we, they've had the toasters, you know, right. uh, NYC ska band, uh, the Toy Dolls, you know, like a punk band from sort of Sunderland, Coxbarra. They had like um, either this year or last last year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and people love that because like I enjoy psychobilly, but mm. like listening to ten psychobilly bands All in a row. All day long, you need a palate cleanser. Yeah. Any kind of music. I'm, yeah, like, and it's the same. Yeah. You know, Rebellion will have like two hundred punk bands, but like there's 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 some rockabilly there. Yeah, and there's some ska there, yeah, and there's yeah. you know other bits and pieces like you know. What I mean? You know, yeah. you got your your fifties and sixties uh, rockabilly kids. They were the punks of the time. Absolutely. It's, it's that whole thing. It's like you're shaking it up and... Uh, and also, you know, when, when punk started, it, like, you know, I, for me, like, punk rock was the Ramones was, like, the kind mm. of day one. Obviously, I know, like, the Stooges and New York Dolls were doing stuff, you know, before that. But uh, it's very much the Ramones in the States and then, obviously, the Pistols over here. And, like, I don't think the Ramones ever got on that nihilism kick. That was a mm. Sex Pistols thing. I'm probably more likely a Malcolm McLaren thing. Like, nihilism and stuff. But, like... Those songs are closer to fifties rock and roll. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, Like yeah. and uh, and you know with the Ramones, m more of a sixties girl group yeah. thing as well. Mm. You know, so I don't believe that like you know the Pistols hadn't hadn't heard and enjoyed like some Eddie Cochran numbers. Yeah, and stuff, yeah, you yeah. Know? Like, it's, it's all in there in there. <laughs> The one yeah, step, yeah. you know, is it is it come on everybody or is it God save the Queen? Like exactly, you know, that's God save the Queen. The chords, <laughs> like yeah, like your your chord progressions. You, I'm a big fan of the uh, one four five. Yeah, like which is the Buddy Holly, uh, Eddie Cochran. It's the Ramones. Um, that one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's talking Nashville at me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like uh, millions of songs. That's you know, yeah. it, and it's like there's only fucking you know seven notes right there's more than that there's some in between but it's like they say notes. there's 12 but surely it's 11 right because yeah, that's that's the same note it's yeah, a different you're right it's 11 yeah 11 well, what about microtones and all that oh, so actually I haven't, when gretch do a, a sitar <laughs> band, yeah. we'll be the first to people to uh endorse it yeah you know? yeah so <laughs> there you go it's like it's all the same slop that's what that's my thing yeah but um sure. You also, I noticed you went wireless 
uh, last night as well. How have you been finding that? Yeah, so uh, I basically like I've upgraded a lot of my gear. As you know, I've also played a band like the Barstool Preachers, uh, who I've been playing with for almost five years now, probably about five years. But that's including like two years of, of COVID lockdown. Um, excuse me. And uh, when I joined, there's, they play with a certain level of professionalism that I was perhaps unaccustomed to mm. at the time. So um, like I had to get better gear. The gear I was using was, was awful kind of thing. And they're very much on the wireless thing. So um, I started using a, a different wireless with them. Uh, and then, yeah, like pedals, like, mm. and buying a better guitar, I sort of resisted all this for because I was still in that punk yeah, mindset yeah. of like, oh, I'm going to spend a load of money on pedals and yeah. wireless, like, uh -huh. but, um, yeah, no, like, <laughs> a wireless is, is, is absolutely great. Now that cool. I find, found one that, like, works properly. You can, like, just walk about, like, uh, so I never do, like I said last <laughs> night, though, it's like, you spend all this money on a wireless and then, like, just stay in the same two two foot square. I'm like in in the preachers. I can move around a lot because yeah. I'm not I'm not the lead singer. You've got to sing, um, yeah. So I've kind of got to be on on the mic most of the time. I'm making excuses here for uh, yeah. lackluster performances. But, uh, <laughs> well, you got the yeah. option to go out there if you want. If yeah. you want to go crowd surfing, it's whatever. just not tripping over the the goddamn yeah, lead yeah. as well, which I used to yeah. do all the fucking time. I'm Taping the leads down. I never used to bother with that, and then we just trip over, and now it's like you know. I'm still living in the dark ages. I'm very much a lead man. Uh, and they can have problems. I think, before wrapping up, I'd like to ask you, what have you got going on? Where can the people find the Zipheads music? Where are you gonna play next? What, you know, tell them what's going on. Next gig is at the Waterloo Music Bar in Blackpool in about two, two hours time. Uh, it's last week for you guys. <laughs> okay, right, 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 right. Okay, <laughs> so. That's tonight, right? The one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah when are you gonna put this out, man? It'll probably be like in a couple of days or something. Okay, right. Next one is uh, the parish in Huddersfield. We might be supporting them. We might oh not. yeah, I you don't said know. that. We're figuring out the uh, logistics. Just getting the confirmation through. Um, awesome. Yeah, no, yeah, that'll be, be good. So yeah, there you go. Perfect. Perfect yeah, promotion. Sweet. Parish in Huddersfield um, on videos? the 20th of July. Sorry. Yeah, no, go, go. 20th of July. 20th of July, Saturday. And then you've released a couple of singles recently? We have. So we're working on our third album. Uh, and it's about halfway done, but we realised it was going to uh, take a, a long while to record it, mainly because of our producer was pretty booked up and also, you know, we, like the other two, have like normal jobs and stuff. Um, so it's like when we can get together to learn the songs and then record them. So we wanted to, you know, release singles off it like proper, like people used to and don't anymore because it's by and large not, not worth it. But yeah, so we put the first uh, single out in December last year, 23. Uh, everybody knows. And um, we just put out one, it's probably a month ago now, uh, How Do You Like Me Now, which is our latest uh, single. Uh, yeah, it came out about a month ago. So, and realistically, we're gonna have one more single out like this year, probably maybe uh, sort of November, October through December kind of time. And then the full album should be landing. I'm gonna, we wanted to get it out this year, but I just don't think it's gonna happen. So we're looking March onwards, uh, 2025. Yeah, the future. The future. It's coming. And also you've got uh, Prehistoric Sounds out. Is that what it's called? The first prehistoric song? Beat. Prehistoric Beat. Prehistoric Beat. Excuse me. And Z2. Z2. There. I'm realising they're not very well titled records now. Uh, yeah, so Prehistoric right. Beat was our first album. Yeah. We initially released that in 2013 ourselves. So that had its 10 year anniversary last year. Uh, it then got re-released uh, by Bomber Music 2018. So you can get it on vinyl and all that now. And then uh, Z2 Rampage uh, is our latest album, which came out in 2016, which is eight fucking years ago. Uh, we also did a EP called Surf Wars two years ago, four track uh, instrumental surf EP. Um, so yeah, that's out. And then we've got a couple of like sort of random singles um, that are floating about online. So, but you can find it all. Uh, you know, just search Zipheads or go to zzz.zipheads.com uh, nice. and then, yeah, 
Facebook, Instagram, all, all the usual places. And like, yeah, everything, everything's up on Spotify. Everything we've ever recorded, I think. Maybe one track we did for a tribute album. I don't think that's on Spotify. But yeah, good luck finding that. Uh, so yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, a rare yeah. one. It's on YouTube, obviously. Yeah. All of this stuff is on YouTube. Um, so yeah. yeah, brilliant. Right, I think I better get ready for my set. Yeah, I'm, I'm supposed gonna, to be playing like now. I'm gonna warm up. For, <laughs> I've got to warm the crowd up for these guys. Yeah, I got 15 minutes. So yeah, Ray from the Zipheads. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, man. All right. You wanna do a handshake? <laughs> Do you want to play a little something just to uh, see us out? Nah. No, Maybe. Right. Brilliant. <laughs>